brought us and we thank him for that in Jesus name amen all right please turn with me in your Bibles to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 1 to 2 the book of Deuteronomy chapter 12 from verse 1 to 2 I read the Bible says that these are the statutes Deuteronomy chapter 12 sorry 28 sorry I beg your pardon Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 to 2 glory be to God I read it says now it shall come to pass if you will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth verse 2 and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord your God and we are blessed by the reading of God's Word I'm starting a new series today that I have titled walking in prompt obedience walking in prompt obedience and this is part one walking in prompt obedience and this is part one please understand that even though we are under grace there are certain laws and principles that are in enforcement please understand that even though we are under grace there are certain laws and principles that are still in enforcement for instance we are under grace but there is a law called the law of gravity the law of gravity says everything that goes up must come down so the fact that we are under grace doesn't mean if you go and stand on a 200 story uh, 200 uh, story building tall and you jump off you will not fall you will fall and you will die why because there is a law called the law of gravity and the law of gravity says everything that goes up must come down and so it's important for us to understand especially when we start teaching on obedience many begin to think that when it comes to grace you don't have to obey God's word but that is the deception from the pit of the devil the Bible says that shall we continue to sin because we have grace it says no God forbid we must not continue to sin because we are under grace being under grace is not a license to be sinful or to walk in sin so the scripture we read in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1 and 2 the Bible says and now it shall come to pass if you will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God now that means it is your responsibility to diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God and the Bible says that if you if you if you it's a clause if it's a clause that means you have a choice whether you want to obey and not just obey in any term but obey in God's term God says if you will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God why is God emphasizing on the word diligence because God only reward those who diligently seek him Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 the Bible says if you if you will diligently seek God then he will reward you if you diligently seek him he'll reward you why because it says without faith it is impossible to please God for he who comes to God must believe that God is God exists and not only that that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him 
Are you following what I'm saying? Those who diligently seek him. So that means God only rewards those who seek him how? Diligently. That means if you seek God lukewarmly, he will not reward you. The reason why you are stuck in life and you haven't moved from where you are believing God to move to is because you are not serving God diligently. God only rewards those who seek him diligently. And the word of God cannot be broken. God will not break his word for anyone. So the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1, it says, now it shall come to pass if you shall diligently, if you will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. Obey the voice of the Lord your God. God wants you and I to obey his voice because your prosperity, your wealth, your breakthrough, your advancement in the kingdom of God lies in your obedience to God's word. That's why the Bible says in the book of Isaiah that you will hear a voice behind you saying this is the way that you should go. Now, if he speaks to you and you don't obey him, he can deliver you from the distractions of the enemy. So it shall come to pass when you if you shall obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully. So there's one thing to diligently obey his voice and there's another thing to observe how carefully all his commandments, not some. You don't pick and choose what you like. He says, if you shall diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, and to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. Say amen to that. God is about to set you above all the nations of the earth but before he does that there are two key things that you must do. You must diligently obey his voice, number one. And then number two, you must observe carefully all his commandments. All his commandments. Jesus said, my commandments are not grievous. Are you following me? So the commandments of God puts us in command in life. Write that down. The commandments of God puts us in command in life. When you carefully, when you carefully, when you diligently, carefully observe all his commandments, which God has given you and I in his word, then God will set you high above all, not some, above all. Glory be to God. That's where I want to be. I want to be above all the nations of the earth in my lifetime. Even after I am dead and gone, by the grace of God, my voice will still be resonating with every generation that comes after me if Jesus tarries. Are you following me? So why is, how is that going to happen? We must diligently obey the voice of the Lord our God. We must diligently obey the voice of the Lord our God. Why? Because it is to your advantage to diligently obey his voice. Obeying the voice of God puts you in command in life. Obeying the voice of God puts you in control. Obeying the voice of God causes you to have dominion here on earth. That's why it is so critical. That's why it is so important for you to observe God's word. For you to obey his word. Obey his voice. Glory be to God. Many of you are still stuck where you are. Why? Because in your, in your, in your disobedience, you are still where you are. Like I always say, God does not do mass promotion. 
God only promotes those who obey his word. If you will diligently, I want to lay the foundation today so it can get into your spirit. I want to encourage you not to tune off these services because I'm going to show you by the time we get to Friday how you can be above all nations of this earth. And I'm telling you, God's word cannot be broken. Jesus said, every word, every title shall come to pass. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away. But he said, my word will never pass away. And I've come to encourage someone who is watching from across the world today that if you will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, and if you observe carefully all his commandments, don't pick and choose all his commandments. Now, somebody will say, but uh, I just want to pick the blessing. I don't want to pick the instructions. No, every aspect of God's word has been given to you and I for our advancement. The word has been given to us for our advancement. Are you following what I'm saying? So it is so vital. So look look at second second Timothy chapter 5 chapter 2 verse 15. And then we'll jump to verse 3 chapter 3 verse 16. Listen, it says, be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So that means when when we have access to God's word, we, we rightly divide the word. We are approved of God. I, I used to go to a club many years ago when I was young called Awana. I don't know whether Awana was in your in your in your country as well, but I was I was part of Awana, I, and we were being taught the word, being a, encouraged to be diligent to to make ourselves useful to God in our in our youth. Mm. Glory be to Amen. God. Amen. I said, glory be to God. Amen. So the Bible says, be diligent to present yourself approved to God. A worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Now go with me to uh, Second Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen. Second Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen. The Bible says that all Scripture, not some, notice that all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. This is why you can't pick and choose what you want. All scripture, all scripture, including the ones that you like and the ones that you don't like. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17. So that the man of God may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work. Did you see that? So in in back to verse 16, it says all scripture, not some scriptures, all scripture. That means the entirety of the Bible, the whole Bible, the whole word of God, from Genesis to Revelation, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it is profitable. So that means the word of God makes you profitable. When you have access to God's word, God's word makes you profitable. I want to challenge somebody who is watching today. Put the word of God to practice for the next three months and see if your life will not be transformed. So all scripture is given by inspiration of God and it is profitable for doctrine, number one. Number two, for reproof. Number three, for correction. Number four, for instruction and also for instruction in righteousness. Why is that? That the man of God may be complete. That the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped, for every good work. Hallelujah. 
thoroughly equipped for every good work. From today, you will be equipped for every good work. As you give yourself wholly to God's word, you will be equipped for every good work. So in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 1, we're still laying the foundation. It says, Now it shall come to pass, if you shall diligently, if you shall diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his all his commandments. Remember 2 Timothy 3, 7, 16. All scripture has been given and the purpose is to make you profitable. All scripture has been given by God, by inspiration by God to make you profitable. To make you profitable. So in Deuteronomy 28 verse 1, he is saying that Obey the voice of the Lord your God and to observe carefully all his commandments. All his commandments which I command you today. That the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. How many of you want to be above all the nations of the earth? I don't know about you. My family and I want to be above all the nations of the earth. I just read an article a couple of days ago about one man whose wealth is in the billions. I don't want to mention names now. And, and, and he's the wealthiest man in the whole world. And somebody was saying that he's, 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 as a single person, he's wealthier than many nations. I don't know whether he's a believer or he's an unbeliever, but God's word cannot be broken. Are you following me? God says, if you will diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God and to observe carefully all his commandments, not some of his commandments, all his commandments, God says that, and to observe carefully all his, all his commandments, he said, I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. God wants to set you above all the nations of the earth. But it is your responsibility to do these two things. Number one, to diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. And number two, to carefully, to observe carefully all his commandments which he commands us in his word. And if we do that, then God will set us above all the nations of the earth. I see God setting you above all the nations of the earth. I see God setting you and your family as you obey God's word, being set above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2 of Deuteronomy chapter 28, it says, And all these blessings will come upon you and overtake you because you have obeyed the voice of the Lord your God. And all these blessings. We don't have time today to go into all the blessings, but hopefully tomorrow we'll go into them. It says, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Why? Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Quick question, what does it mean to walk in prompt obedience? Remember, we're talking about what? Walking in prompt obedience. What does it mean to walk in prompt obedience? To walk in prompt obedience is to fully align yourself with the will and the word of God despite prevailing circumstances. To walk in prompt obedience is to fully align yourself with the will and the word of God despite prevailing circumstances. Listen, obedience might be costly, but the end result is rewarding. Obedience might be costly, but the end result of obedience is rewarding. And listen to me, there are greater rewards in walking in prompt obedience 
than in disobedience. There are greater rewards in walking in prompt obedience than in disobedience. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 4. Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 4. I read, it says, Now the Lord said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family, and from your father's house, to a land that I, the Lord, will show you. And when you get out to the land that I will show you, this is God's promise to Abraham. God says, I will make you a great nation. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. God says, if you get out of your father's house, out of your country, out of your kindred, to the land that I will show you, if you obey, God says, I will make you, Abraham, a single individual, a great nation. I see God making someone a great nation. In your generation, God will make you a great nation. God will make your family a great nation. In your lifetime, you will see the grace for greatness coming upon you. I see in this commission, God raising men and women who will be greater than nations in the mighty name of Jesus. God says, I will make you, Abraham, a great nation. And not only that, God says, I will bless you and make your name great. Oh, hallelujah. God is about to make somebody's name great. As we walk through this week, step by step, line upon line, here a little, there a little, without any shadow of doubt, God is going to make you great. In the name of Jesus. He said, I will make your name great and you shall be a blessing. Not a curse. You shall be a blessing. Hallelujah. He says, and I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. And in you, Abraham, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. In you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God says, because you obey my word, I will put blessing upon anybody who blesses you. And I'll put a curse upon anyone who curses you. Glory be to God. Last month's prophetic encounter was curse the curse. Amen. to God. Hallelujah. God says, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you following me? So God is saying to Abraham, if you will obey me, if you follow my footstep, if you follow my word, then I will curse whoever curses you, whether in secret or in public. Anybody who touches you has touched me. Glory be to God. What a joy to know that God will take up your battles for you. Amen. I've come to speak to someone today. God is about to fight your battles for you. Amen. Somebody you have a court case coming in the coming this week and in the coming months, but God is about to cause you to be victorious in the name of Jesus. Amen. And God says, and in you, in you, Segbeji, in you, Solution, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Amen. Somebody ought to say a good amen. amen. God says, in you, not some of the families of the earth. God says, in you shall how many, all the families of the earth be blessed. Verse 4 is key. The Bible says that, So Abraham departed as the Lord has spoken to him. That's what I call prompt obedience. So Abraham departed. I want you to notice something. That when God was speaking to Abraham at this time, this is the first time Abraham is having an encounter with God. Abraham's father was an idol worshiper 
for 75 years all Abraham knew about was idol worshiping. But one day he woke up to a God that he didn't know that spoke to him and said, get out of your father's house. Sacrifice your country. Sacrifice your father's house. Sacrifice your family. Get out of everything that you have known for the past 75 years to a land that I will show you. God didn't show him the land yet. God said to him, I will show you this land on the basis that you are going to obey my word and move. And God said to him, if you will move, Abraham, I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. Amen. And you shall be a blessing. I receive that for myself from today. God says, and you shall be a blessing, not a burden. You shall be what? A blessing, not a burden. God says, I will make your name great, not titles. Some of you very soon, wherever your name is mentioned, doors will be open. Some of you very soon, you wouldn't need a visa to travel to a nation. You will just need your name. God is going to make your name so great. You wouldn't need a passport. You wouldn't need a visa to travel to any nation. Well, it doesn't matter what nation it is. You wouldn't need a passport. You wouldn't need a visa to travel to any nation. Why? Because God is making your name great. Wherever your name is mentioned, greatness will be associated. I said, somebody is listening to me right now. You will not need a passport. You will not need a visa. God is giving you a great name. And through that great name, nations will be open unto you. And you'll be traveling around the world, not with passports, not with visas. But you'll be traveling on the basis of your name. So God said to Abraham, I will make you a great nation. Amen. I will bless those who bless you. Amen. And I will curse those who curse you. Amen. And out of you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Amen. The Bible says that an Abraham departed. That's what I call prompt obedience. What do you think about such a man? Will God bless him or will not he not bless him? You know the story in Genesis chapter 22, God told Abraham, sacrifice your only son, Isaac. Abraham obeyed. He went the following morning, departed, went, took his son to go and, and, and create and, and, and sacrifice his son. And the next thing, God said to Abraham, now I know. Now I know, Abraham, that in blessing, I will bless you. Amen. In multiplying, I will multiply you. Amen. How did God get to know Abraham to that level? Because Abraham worked in prompt obedience. Look at the end of Abraham in Genesis chapter 24, verse 1. The Bible says that now Abraham, Abraham was very old and well advanced in age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in how many things? In all things. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. That's what happens when you walk in prompt obedience. Amen. Listen, walking in obedience with God is not to God's advantage. It is to your advantage. Walking in prompt obedience is to your advantage, not to God's advantage. Abraham walked in prompt obedience. And the Bible says that in his old age, look at his end, very old, well advanced in age. The Bible says that, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Amen. Write this down. You cannot put God first in life and God put you last in life. It doesn't work that way. You can't put God first in life and God put you last in life. 
If you put God first, God will put you first. If you put God first, God will make you the apple of his eyes. That's why Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Glory be to God. Yes. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek first. Be a kingdom seeker. Glory. Be a kingdom seeker. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. All you have to do is seek first. Seeking first the kingdom of God is not grievous. Jesus said, if you want all things in life to be added unto you, the solution, the key, is in seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things that the world is running after shall be added unto you. My prayer for you today is that you walk in an encounter this week. This week will be your week of encounter. This week you have an encounter with the word of God. This week you have an encounter with the power of God. This week, the Holy Spirit will quicken your heart and you will be transformed to the glory of his name. Hallelujah. Amen. So God says, seek first. God says, seek first. Jesus says, seek first. And I am telling you also, seek first. What you seek first magnifies in your life. Seek the kingdom. Seek the expansion of the kingdom. Seek the welfare of God's kingdom. Seek the welfare of the church. Seek to serve God with all your life. And see if he will not expand you across the world. Right, this and there are two types of obedience. There are two types of obedience. There is partial obedience. Partial obedience. Partial obedience simply is not fully following God's plan for your life. Partial obedience is not fully following God's plan for your life. Number two, there is what I call prompt and complete obedience. Prompt and complete obedience. Prompt and complete obedience is fully following the will of God for your life. Prompt and complete obedience is fully following the will of God for your life. Please hear me. Your prompt obedience to the, to the voice of God can change somebody's life. Your prompt obedience to the voice of God can change somebody's destiny can change somebody's life. You say, how, Pastor? First John, or John chapter 1, verse 44 to 46. John chapter 1, from verse 44 to 46. The Bible says that now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathaniel and said to him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And Philip said to him, Come and see. I want you to see the process. Philip had an encounter with Jesus. The next thing Philip did, walking in prompt obedience, he went and found Nathaniel. And when he found Nathaniel, he said to Nathaniel, Come, for I have found whom it has been spoken of by Moses and the prophets. I found Jesus Christ. 
I found Jesus Christ. Are you following me? So, Philip found Jesus. Philip walked in prompt obedience. He went and found Nathaniel, brought Nathaniel to Jesus. But before he brought Nathaniel to Jesus, Nathaniel asked, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Can anything good come out of this situation? And I love Philip's response. Philip said to Nathaniel, you just come and see. I love that. You see, as a child of God, your responsibility is to just go and tell people, come and see. Glory be to God. Come and see. Come and see Jesus. Come and see the Savior of the world. Come and see the one who delivered me out of poverty. Come and see the one who healed my tuberculosis. Come and see the one who cured my cancer. Come and see the one who healed my migraine. Come and see the one who brought me out of drunkenness. Come and see the one who delivered me from the pit of the devil. That's your responsibility. All you have to go and do is tell others, come and see and it takes prompt obedience to do that. And please hear me. There are blessings in every act of obedience. There are so many blessings. Many people are missing out on the blessings of the Lord because they are not walking in prompt obedience. There are blessings in every act of obedience. But the blessing only manifests when we obey. The blessings only manifest when we obey. Write this down. Our supplies end where our obedience stop. Our supplies in God ends where our obedience stops. So that means if you don't want your supplies from God to stop, Continue walking in what? Prompt obedience. Continue walking in prompt obedience. For to obey is better than sacrifice. For to obey is better than what? Sacrifice. So, precious one, walk in obedience. God is calling all of us to a new level of obedience. I have never seen any man or any woman who has diligently obeyed God's voice and carefully observed God's word that has ever gone down. Never happened. So obey God's word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I said obey God's word. Walk in obedience. Let obedience become your joy. And today I speak grace to obey upon you. Grace to obey God's word promptly Amen. comes upon you. That same level of grace that caused Abraham to go and sacrifice his only son. That through that sacrificial sacrifice, God said to Abraham, Now I know that you truly obey me. And because of that, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. Listen, if God has to say, now I know, then that means you have done something to touch God's heart. My prayer is that many of you will come to that point where God will say to you, now I know that you have truly obeyed me. Amen. Now I know, may that be your testimony. Amen. May God say this about you, now I know that you truly obey me. Amen. Are you following me? For he said, do not lay your hand on the Lord or do anything to him for now I know that you fear God. Now I know that you obey God. Now I know that you have not withheld your son from me, your only son. Look at verse 13 of Genesis chapter 22. The Bible says that then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and there was behind him a ram caught in a thicket by its horn. 
So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. Look at what happens when you obey God. There is always supernatural provision. You cannot obey God and lack. You cannot obey God in this world and go down. Some of you are still stagnant because you have not obeyed God. Some of you watching your ministry is stagnant because you have not obeyed God. Some of you, your business is stagnant because you have not obeyed God. God has spoken to you to sacrifice your Isaac, but you are looking at the material things that God is asking you to sacrifice. And as a result of that, you are lacking behind. Receive grace tonight Amen. to obey God. Amen. Receive grace tonight to obey Amen. God. Like Abraham, may God say that about you. Now I know. Verse 14 of Genesis chapter 22. The Bible says that in Abraham call the name of that place. The Lord will provide Amen. as it is to this day. In the mouth of the Lord, it shall be provided. You see, you can never know God as an El Shaddai if you are not walking in prompt obedience. The God who provides. The Bible says that the cattle upon a thousand hills, God says they are mine. God says the silver is mine. The gold is mine. God says if I am hungry, I will not ask you. So all you have to do is walk in prompt and complete obedience and see God channel harvest wealth from secret places into your life. And I prophesy over someone in this 40 days of glory. Before we end, you will be singing songs of joy. Amen. You will be singing songs of praises. Amen. God will put a song of laughter in your mouth. God will put a song of laughter in your mouth. You have served God promptly. And some of you are asking God, when? When, Lord? When, Lord? God, you asked me to do this. I obeyed. When is the blessing coming? I prophesy to you that this week, your blessing is coming. Anything that has held your blessing in the realm of the spirit, right now by the everlasting blood of the covenant, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I release angelic assistance to release your blessings for you now. In the name of Jesus. Prompt obedience is key. Prompt obedience is key. Your obedience is so important. That's why your supplies end where your obedience stop. Don't stop obeying God. Amen. There has never been anyone who has obeyed God who has never been lifted. Name them Abraham. Name them Isaac. Name them Jacob. Name them Joseph. Name them Noah. Name them Peter, name them Paul, name them Jesus. Everyone that has obeyed the voice of God, God has lifted them up. And your lifting up is coming this week. Amen. Some of you, your companies are about to break invincible barriers that are in front of you. Any limitation, you have been stuck. You have been stuck. It's like you never cross a certain limitation. Tonight, that limitation is broken. Amen. Tonight, that limitation is broken. Amen. I said, tonight, that limitation is broken. Amen. Tonight, I saw something that I have never seen before. In On one of our streaming platforms, I saw over 12,000 live viewers. I've never seen it before. I'm telling you, every time you walk in obedience, God honors his word. Amen. You cannot walk in obedience and God put you down. Are you following what I'm saying? So obey God. Receive grace to obey God. Receive grace to obey God. Receive grace to obey God, to obey God in the name of Jesus. The tangible manifestations of your blessings are locked up in your obedience. Oh my God. The tangible manifestations 
of all your blessings are locked up are hidden and locked up in your obedience all you have to do is to obey when you obey God the blessings will be made manifest John chapter 2 verse 5 the mother of Jesus said to the servant whatever he tells you to do just do it his mother said to the servants, whatever Jesus, my son, says to you to do, just do it. Don't argue. And you know the story? At this point, they needed wine. They had no wine. And Jesus said to them, <laughs> pour water into the water pots. Pour water. <laughs> And uh, you say, but what we need here is wine, not water. <laughs> we need wine, not water. Jesus, you're asking me to pour water? We need wine at the wedding. Remember, whatever he tells you to do, what do you do? Do it. It doesn't have to make sense to your five senses before you do it. That's why we don't walk by sight. We walk by faith. Jesus said, whatever, the mother of Jesus said to them, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And Jesus said to them, fill the water pot with water. And don't only fill it, fill it to the brim. I love the servants. The Bible says that, and the servants obeyed. They filled the water pot to the brim, and then they drew the water to the governor of the wedding. When they drew it, and they took it to the master of the feast and he tasted it and then he said everybody uh, <laughs> everybody uh, gives the inferior wine from the beginning but you have kept the good one until now every man at the beginning sets the good wine and when the guests are well drunk, then they add the bad one in. So when they are drunk, they don't see that what they are now drinking is a bad one. <laughs> but you see, Jesus always keeps the best for last. God always keeps the best for last. When you obey God, he places you to show you forth to the world. God is about to show someone that is watching now forth to the nations. You are going to become a global name. You are going to become a household name because you are walking in obedience. You are walking in prompt obedience. You are doing whatever he tells you to do. He tells you to wake up and pray. It doesn't make sense. Just wake up and pray. He tells you to fast pray. Just wake up and fast and pray. He tells you to give. Just give. He tells you to empty your bank account. Just do it because whatever he tells you to do, just do it. Just do it. Peter and the rest had told all night in Luke chapter 5 from verse 1 to 7. Told all night and caught nothing. Jesus said to them, let's read it from verse 1. Luke chapter 5 from verse, from verse 1. The Bible says that, and Jesus came to the, to the lake of Gennesaret to preach. And so it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of the Lord. And he stood by the lake and whilst he was preaching, the Bible says in verse 2, glory be to God, that whilst he was preaching, he said to Simon Peter, if you give me your, your boat, because in verse 2 he saw two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone out from them and they were washing their nets. And then in verse 3, Jesus said, Can I use your boat? If I can use your boat to teach, then I can give you fish. See how the kingdom of God operates? Obey God. It doesn't have to make sense to you before you obey God. At this point, Peter had the right to tell Jesus, 
Can you not see? I went fishing. I'm struggling. My fishing business is not working. And you want to use it to preach? This is what kingdom partnership is all about. Give your boats to Jesus. Give that business that is not working to Jesus. Give that marriage that is struggling to Jesus. Give that child that is struggling to Jesus. Give that business to Jesus. Give that relationship to Jesus and see how he will turn it around. So in verse 4, after Jesus had finished preaching with Peter's sheep, use Peter's sheep as a pulpit. Oh, I speak to someone today. Some of you are going to build God 100 churches across villages where your pastor will not be involved. You just go and build the churches and hand the keys to the pastor. Everything paid for by yourself. 100 churches. Some of you are going to build 500 churches. You tell God, my business, if you give me this level of wealth, I'll build you a thousand churches. That those churches will be accommodating minimum 5,000 seaters, minimum 10,000 seaters, building them across villages. And you build them and bring the keys to the pastor and say, Pastor, I've built it. Now, poop. Post a pastor there. And whatever pastor you are going to post their pastor, I'm going to pay that pastor for life. And see if your business will not start exploding globally. So after Jesus has preached in Peter's boat, Jesus said to Peter, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Somebody is about to let down their nets for a catch. In the name of Jesus, I decree over you that in this season, it's your season of breaking out on every side. Anything that has limited you is coming to an end from today in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, Simon answering and said unto him, Master, we have told all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word. I will let down the net. I love that. Nevertheless, at your word, the word of God is so potent. The word of God is so powerful. The word of God has the ability to create whatever you want in this world. That's why in this church, in this commission, the word of God is above everything we do. Because every time the word is released, creative miracles happen. Every time the word of God goes forth, miracles are happening. Healings are taking place. Breakthroughs are taking place. Why? Because within the word is the ability to create anything you want in this world. So the Bible says, and Simon Peter answering said, Lord, we have told all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I'll let down the net. Nevertheless, at your word, I'll let down the net. And when he had this done, oh, I love this. You see, you have to do the word before you see the manifestations of your breakthrough. You want to see your breakthrough first? You have to first do the word. The Bible says that when he had this done, they enclosed, they caught a great number of fish and their net was breaking. May you come into this season where you have so much in store and many more to be a blessing to the world in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says Simon Peter signaled his partners. He beckoned upon their partners signal their past partners in the other boat to come and help them is this not a good blessing a blessing where you signal others to come and help you it shall be your portion in the name of jesus it shall be your portion in the name of jesus i said it shall be your portion in the name of jesus where you are signaling people to come and help you carry the blessing where you are going around village after village, building hospitals, 
building schools, building free libraries, educating communities, making sure those communities are the light because God has called us to be the light of the world and the salt of the earth. Glory be to God. That's what happens when we walk in prompt obedience. Their boats also began to sink, to sing because there was too much to carry. Listen, don't be stuck in life. Receive the grace to walk in prompt obedience from today. In the name of Jesus. Write this down. Toiling is a sign that you have ignored a divine instruction. Toiling is a sign that you have ignored a divine instruction. If there is toiling in your life, in any area of your life, it is a sign that you have disobeyed or ignored a divine instruction. So check your life, examine your life. Because God wants to make you the head and not the tail. Hallelujah. God wants his children to be at the top in every country in this world. That's what I believe in. Because Jesus said, you are a city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. He said, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. A city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. So God's ultimate desire is for his children to be the top in every nation. In every government, Christians are there. In every nation, president, I believe the time is coming. In the next 10 to 15 years, in every nation on the surface of the earth, every prime minister will be a Christian. Every president will be a Christian. Every member of parliament will be a Christian. Why? Because we are walking in obedience. So Isaiah chapter 1 verse 19 and 20 it says if you are willing and obedient you shall eat the good of the land. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat what? The good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. So listen, there is nothing in disobedience. Walk in obedience. Work in obedience. Work in prompt obedience. For every covenant of God is activated through prompt obedience. Every covenant. Every covenant of God is activated through prompt obedience. Quick question we want to ask and then we look at a few steps and we get ready to close. Is what must I do to eat the good of the land? What must I do to eat the good of the land? Number one, to eat the good of the land, seek first the expansion of the kingdom of God. Number one, seek first the expansion of the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, Jesus said, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. If you want to know the things Jesus is talking about, read from verse 20 up to verse 33 and you will see all the things that Jesus wants to be added that you will be added number two win at least one soul every month you want to eat the good of the land win one soul every month without fail win one soul every month don't be a Christian who is unfruitful? God hates unfruitfulness. Be a fruitful Christian. Walk in prompt obedience. Like I said, this is a great time. Some of you watching now, you can send this live stream to 250 people on your phone. 
to watch through with you. If you commit to this every time we come live, you are walking in what? Prompt obedience. Yes, some might be happy with you, some might not be happy with you, but at the end of the day, you have done your bit. So, walk in prompt obedience. You don't know who is going to get saved in any of the service. So, win at least one soul every month. Or by extension, forward the live stream to everyone you know on your phone. At least minimum 250 people. If you don't know 250 people, forward it to 100 people. When the service starts, forward the live stream to 100 people. Forward it to 50 people. Forward it to 20 people. What are you doing? As they are watching, they will be getting blessed on the same level you are getting blessed. So number two, to eat the good of the land, win at least one soul every month. The Bible says that those who win souls are wise. Soul winners are wise people. And not only that, God says, and they will be like the stars forever. Amen. Glory be to God. They will be like the stars forever. That means whenever you keep winning souls, you keep shining brighter and brighter. Brighter and brighter. Proverbs 4.18, it says, before I go to Proverbs 4, 18, I read Daniel chapter 12, verse 3. It says, those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteous, righteousness like the stars forever. In other words, those who win souls will be like the stars forever and ever. Amen. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18. It says, the path of the just the path of the righteous is like a shining sun. It's like a shiny sun that shines how ever brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Number three, last but not the least, to eat the good of the land so sacrificially for the establishment of the house of God. Like I said earlier, Build churches in villages. Build churches in cities. And hand it over to the church. And say, Pastor, I, I want to build 10 churches. Commit to God. Make a vow to God. Say to God, God, I want to build 10 churches for you in this year, 2020. I want to build 10 churches for you in 2021. I want to build 30 churches for you in 2022. Commit to God and see if God will not bless you. And that's how the kingdom of God operates. So learn to sow sacrificially. Commit to feed a family for life. Commit to take care of a village for life. Commit to put electricity or water, portable drinking water, clean water into a village for life. Commit to that. And these things will not cost you anything. It will not cost you much. In your commitment, God will begin to expand you. You need to come to the church and say, Pastor, I want you to go to this village and, and, and dig boreholes for them. This village that have no clean drinking water, I want the church to, I'm going to sponsor and let the church go and start clean water processes for these companies. How is that going to happen when you sow sacrificially? For the establishment of the house of God. When people see this, they will know that the church is really the church. Haggai chapter 1, from verse, verse 2. It says, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, These people say, The time has not come. The time that the Lord's house shall be built. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you yourself to dwell in paneled houses? And this temple be lie in ruins. Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much, from verse 6, you have sown much and bring in little. You eat, but you do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourself, but no one is warm. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. 
Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. You look for much, but indeed it comes to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away, says the Lord of hosts. Because of my house that is in ruins, well, every one of you runs to his own house. Therefore, the heavens above you have withhold their dews, and the earth has withhold its fruit. For I call for a drought on the land, and the mountains, on the grain, and the new wine, and the oil, and on whatever the ground brings forth, on men and livestock, and on all the labor of your hands. My God, my God. Look at what happens. Look at what happens when you don't obey God promptly. It's time. I said it's time. It's time for the church to do exploits. As we walk in prompt obedience, we'll begin to see what we have never seen before in the name of Jesus. Now we want to close this service wherever you are. I want you to prepare your communion elements. Co prepare your communion elements. We are going to pray and ask God for grace, supernatural grace for prompt obedience. Hallelujah. Supernatural grace for prompt obedience. Hallelujah. As you walk in prompt obedience, you begin to see the manifestations of God's glory in your life. The time has come for you to see God's glory. The time has come for you to experience the manifold blessings of the Lord, but it happens only through prompt word obedience. So wherever you are, I want to pray with you. If you have not given your life to Jesus, maybe somebody invited you to watch this, or maybe you just stumbled on this, but on this live stream by accident. You haven't given your life to Jesus. I want to pray with you. I want to lead you to Christ. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in your book of life. May I serve you all the days of my life. From today, Jesus, I have decided to follow you and never to go back ever again. So help me, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, you are now born again. You are now a child of the Most High God. You are now bound for heaven. I want to pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for these precious ones who have given their lives to you. Bless them. Preserve them. Cause them to be established in your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Now let's prepare communion elements wherever you are. Prepare your communion elements. Glory be to God. Prepare your communion elements. The bread represents the body of Christ. As we partake of this, the Bible says that, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread and broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take it. This is my body. So the bread represents the body of Christ. It's a covenant. As you partake of this bread today, which becomes the body of Christ. Receive grace to walk in prompt obedience. Receive grace to walk in prompt obedience. Now this bread becomes the body of Christ. Please take and eat. It is blessed. Share with your family. Share with everyone. Partake of it.
the Bible says that the same manner, then he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is now the blood of the new covenant. This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shared for you. As you partake of this communion tonight, wherever you are, receive grace to walk in prompt obedience so God can set you above all the nations of the earth. Receive grace to walk in prompt obedience. As you partake of this cup, anything in your system that is not of God, any sickness, any diseases will be flushed out tonight in the name of Jesus. The blood is a sign of a new covenant as, and as you partake of this new covenant, you are exempted from every demonic attack, from any form of virus. You are preserved for life. Jesus name the cup of the new covenant take and drink Now I want us to begin to pray. Now I want you to begin to pray. I want you to pray for grace for prompt obedience. Grace for prompt obedience. God wants to set you up high above all the nations of the earth. Now begin to pray. Begin to pray. Grace for prompt obedience. Grace for prompt obedience. Sati Katalabra. Grace for prompt obedience. Grace for prompt obedience. Grace for prompt obedience. Grace for prompt obedience. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus. Grace for prompt obedience. God wants to set you up high above all the mountains of the earth. All nations. All nations. God wants to set you high above all the nations of the earth. Receive grace. Grace, grace, grace. Great grace. Grace to obey now. Grace to obey now. Open your mouth and pray. Ask God to give you grace to obey. Great grace is coming upon you. In the name of Jesus. Just two more minutes. We have just two more minutes to close. Open your mouth and pray. 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 Grace to operate in a new level of dimension. Grace to, to, to obey. Grace to obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Grace to obey, grace to obey, grace to obey, new levels of grace, new levels of anointings, new levels, new levels, new levels, greater dimensions. Today is the last day of poverty in your life. You will never lack any good thing from henceforth. God is setting you up above, setting you up above, high above the mountains high above the mountains god is lifting you up 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 he's lifting you up he's lifting you up he's lifting you up it's your season to be lifted it's your season to be lifted open your mouth and pray just one more minute pray Pray and ask God for grace, grace to be lifted, 
grace to be lifted great grace is coming upon you and your family God is taking this commission to a new level new levels he is breaking new levels we are entering into every nation millions millions of souls on a daily basis millions are being added on a daily basis millions are being added on a daily basis millions are added on a daily basis in every household there will be a member of this commission across the world across the globe open your mouth and pray new levels of grace greater grace deeper levels of grace grace to walk in obedience prompt obedience in the name of Jesus is coming upon you is coming upon you is coming upon you in Jesus name in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus listen listen I have worked with God for a few years and it's been a walk of prompt obedience and I've seen God change my level every obedience comes with a new level every act of obedience comes with a new level don't stay where you are God wants to change your level don't hold back the Holy Spirit is speaking to you obey him and see God move you to the next level in Jesus name Amen and Amen. Glory be to God. We've come to the end of the first day of the prophetic encounter. Join us again tomorrow from 6.30 p.m. BST, British Summer Time. Join us for an encounter. Gather your family. Tomorrow we want to see a greater dimensions of God's power. Gather your family tomorrow. Join us 6.30 p.m. in your homes prepare your communion elements and let's together partake of it and let's see God do awesome things in your lives. I know without any shadow of doubt that you have entered into a new season. It's a new level. New level. Greater glory. That's what we'll be experiencing from henceforth in Jesus name. We love you. God bless you in Jesus name. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God a sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Go from this place with this confidence and assurance knowing that Christ in you is a hope of glory. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord give you peace on every side. May God cause you to be the head and not the tail. May it, beginning from tonight be new levels of blessings, new levels of obedience, new levels of greater glory, new level of harvest is coming upon you. Go from this place with this confidence and assurance, knowing that you are a solution to the nation. We'll gather again tomorrow at half six. Remember, we are fasting and praying. And we'll be partaking of communion tomorrow. And then Friday is communion and anointing night. You will never be the same again in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a glorious night in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.